Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are covering the new APCC 1.9.6 version in the Companion ASCOM V2 application. We are going to specifically cover how to install or update the apps. We're going to highlight new features including moving from virtual ports to the REST API as the default connection. We're going to cover the new connection workflow, which is important for everyone using this version of the application. We're going to cover the new auto center feature. And finally, some of my favorite small enhancements that have been added in various recent versions that you just may not know about. As you watch this video, please make sure to use the chapter markers listed in the description or on your YouTube playback head. We cover a lot of details for every level of user. So if you want to skip some sections, you can use that to do so. You can find information about your current version and license under the help menu. Choose about to see your current APCC version. Choose view update license subscription to see your current license information and available features. You can use the purchase subscription renewal if you want to access new features available with a subscription renewal. This update can be installed by anyone with an APCC standard or pro license. Access to new features are determined by your license state, but the various bug fixes and enhancements are available to everyone. The new versions are 1.9.6.1 for APCC Pro and 1.9.6.0 for APCC Standard. These are both the exact same version. The Pro just uses odd numbers and the Standard uses even numbers for the last version digit just to keep them separate. The Companion ASCOM V2 driver version for this release is 5.60.01. You can download the latest version of APCC by using the Check for Updates option under the Help menu, or at the Software Updates page on the Astrophysics website. Make sure to download both the APCC update and the ASCOM v2 driver update. Before you install the new versions, you will want to first uninstall the current APCC and ASCOM software. It's generally a good idea to do this to avoid future issues. Make sure to quit the current applications that are running. And we can find the uninstall applications in the control panel under programs and features. We'll find it here in the list. And just click uninstall. When you uninstall APCC and the ASCOM driver, it's important to note that you will not lose your license information or your settings file by uninstalling them. Next, we will go to our download folder where we downloaded APCC and ASCOM and we will run the installer. On this installer step, it's important to note that we do not recommend installing virtual ports as we now use the REST API as the preferred connection method. And now we'll run the ASCOM v2 installer. Now we're going to launch APCC. We're going to first talk about the changes to the connection group. You will still need to choose a method to connect to your astrophysics mount, either UDP, TCP, or serial, which is USB. But now you can choose Find Mount if you happen to be using TCP or UDP, and this will list all of the available mounts in your network. You can click on it, choose Select, and it will fill in the appropriate IP address. Next, you'll notice in the ASCOM driver configuration, you can only configure the driver 
Connecting to the ASCOM driver is now only invoked through third-party applications such as Nina, Sequence Generator Pro, Voyager, and so forth. You'll notice that REST API is now the default configuration. When you click Config Driver, it will set up the ASCOM driver to connect via the REST API. These settings are also available under Settings and Edit ASCOM Driver Settings. You can now see that the mount connection details are more descriptive of which ones go through REST API and which ones are for connecting without using APCC. Now that we've configured the mount connection, we can click Connect to connect APCC to the mount. External applications now invoke the ASCOM driver to connect to APCC. So in this example, we're going to use APJOG. We'll go ahead and click Connect. It will invoke the ASCOM application that will now connect through APCC. You'll notice that the ASCOM application interface is hidden, but you can always see that by going into the taskbar icons. The ASCOM window is available in the system icon tray. I like to click this Keep on Top so I can keep this window available, and then double-clicking the icon will launch the interface. And I can click the Minimize to hide this window. Disconnecting the external application will also cause the ASCOM driver to quit as well. It's important to note here that the REST API is now the default connection between the ASCOM driver and APCC. This should be much more reliable and much more robust than the virtual ports, and you'll also notice that the virtual port tab is no longer available. This also means configuring the ASCOM driver is very easy. You just click the Configure button, it will dim and return, and the ASCOM driver is now properly configured. Let's now recap the workflow you would use to connect APCC and ASCOM and your third-party applications. The first thing you would do is you would launch APCC. And connect APCC to your mount. You can also optionally use the Auto Connect checkbox to automatically connect the mount anytime you launch APCC. Next, we will use our third party application, in this example, Nina, to connect our telescope to the mount. And when we click this, it's going to launch the ASCOM driver, which will connect to APCC that is already connected to the mount. And we can see that everything is now connected. So the order is you launch APCC and connect to the mount either manually or automatically, and then use your external applications to connect via the ASCOM driver to APCC and then to the mount. Plate Solve and Auto Center is a new feature in this version that allows you to go to a target and to center it up using the built-in tools of APCC and APPM. Let's see how it works. First, I'm gonna bring up the planetarium program. Here we are in the Southern Hemisphere showing our pointing position of the AP1600. I'm going to select M79 and just slew to this target. Now you can see according to the mount in Stellarium, this is framed up on M78. However, I purposely offset this. So let's take a look in Sequence Generator just by taking a picture to demonstrate where we actually are. Clearly, there's no sign of the M79 globular cluster and where the telescope is currently pointing. So let's go ahead and hide this. And we will use the plate solve and auto center routine to center up that target. Just a note that in order to use this new feature, you must already have configured APPM to successfully plate solve using your current setup. So the process is successful and it's moved the target to the center. So let's go ahead and take another picture of this. And here we can see the plate solve and auto center routine has worked perfectly. And I have a center target with just one button click.
Here are a few helpful shortcuts you may not know about from recent APCC versions. These are not necessarily from this specific version, but they are nice ways to improve your experience using APCC. The first shortcut is you can use the status bar to park and unpark the mount. Just hover your mouse over the status bar and double click, and it will unpark the mount. And then you can double click again to park the mount. The second tip is in the park tab where you can move between different park positions without having to unpark the mount. In previous versions of APCC, you first had to unpark the mount before you could park it at a different position. This is especially handy if you have a park position where your flat panel is. The third tip is for users in the southern hemisphere. You can use the View South checkbox to reorient the telescope position map, and it will also change the Move Scope button's orientation. Thanks for watching to the end. That's it for the 1.9.6 release of APCC and the companion update to the ASCOM V2 driver. You should now be able to install the software, use the REST API for connecting the applications, and have a few more tips that make your experience hopefully a little bit better. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up or better yet, subscribe to our channel and click the notify bell to be informed of future videos from Astrophysics.